Lord, you saw how they gave us our world. I just want to give you praise, Lord, for what you're doing in this house, Lord. Let me tell you something real quick before I go to Thank you, Jesus Christ. Um, some cough in here. But I will get through this in Jesus' in the mighty name of the Lord. I praise God for what he's doing. I give God all the glory for what he's doing. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're so holy. You are holy, Lord. We're on Facebook Live. Yes, we're on Facebook Live. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And we're on YouTube. <coughs> Lord, thank you, Jesus. I just want to be sure that I'm on. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the King. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Today we're going to talk about faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Yeah, faith, hope, and love. Glory to the King. Faith, hope, and love. And we're, we've been studying in the Book of Romans on Saturday. So we're going to, uh, yes. So we're going to be uh, discussing. Is this, this? Has to do with uh, the book of Romans 6. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> well, here we go. <coughs> Let me get this shirt up. <coughs> to messenger, thank you, Jesus. God is so good. He is so good. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I thought I was going to share it out. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the King. Yes. 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 Okay, here we go. Let me read about faith, hope, and love. Okay. Faith, hope, and love. Praise the Lord. Let me get back to the you know, I had to, uh, hmm, I had to recall a long time, so I'll, I had, okay, the arrows of God, the arrows of God, faith, hope, and love, these three, which provides eight lessons on the big three, the thing expressed by Paul, and now abide with faith, hope, and love, these three, and the greatest of these is love. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, the prophecy about Jesus Christ in Psalms 45, verse 3 through 6, contains a statement, your arrows are sharp. What are the arrows of God? Perhaps there are many <coughs> questions, many answers to that question. Uh, but these words simply rem readily to mind. Words spring readily to mind. Now, abide in faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. That's the arrows of God. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. So I would, an arrow needs a I, mean, I would like to, us to think about faith, hope, and love as the arrows of God. Now, arrows need at least three things. Not only do physical arrows need these three things, but the arrows of God needs these things too. An arrow needs a target. An arrow needs a target. The first thing that an arrow needs is a target. Without a target to aim at, an arrow would seem to have little purpose. Archery without a target <coughs> just an undisciplined and aimless shooting of arrows in the air would 
would not make much sense. It would be as silly as a race with nowhere to run to and nothing to run for. Or a boxing match where the opponents just beat the air. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26. When children play ball, ball games, there's usually some kind of card. There's usually, there, sometimes, uh, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. A wicket, a hoop, a ghost square, or a target painted on a brick wall. But when children play with bubbles, <coughs> excuse me, they cannot do very much with them. Bubbles are nice, they are fun, but rather airy fairy things, whereas balls are more serious and substantial things which can be propelled towards God. Our faith, hope, and love must be like the balls, not like the bubbles. If God's arrows are faith, hope, and love, then what are their targets? In Colossians 1, verse 4 and 5, we find not only faith, hope, and love, but their targets as well. We heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints because of the hope they bring you in heaven. Colossians 1, verse 4 and 5. Paul speaks of faith in Christ. Faith in Christ Jesus. There is a target of the faith arrow. Christ Jesus. Well, you say to me, Oh, I have faith, but I ask you who are. What is the target of your faith? Is it a faith directed at Jesus Christ, or is it airy faith, airy fairy faith that is <laughs> the Jesus, the author of it? All right, mate. <coughs> okay. Paul speaks of love for all the saints. There's the target of the love arrow. All the saints. Of course, this is not the only target of love. There are others. For example, there's the love of God. Jude 1, 20, verse 21. And the love of the truth. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10. You say to me, oh, I have love, but I ask you, who is the target of that love? Amen. Is it a love directed at all your Christian brothers and sisters in Christ, and beyond them especially to all humanity in its great need of salvation? Or is your love directed at a tiny bullseye, not much bigger than yourself? So tiny is impossible to hear. Paul speaks of hope laid up for you in heaven. There's a target of the hope arrow. Heaven, you say to me, oh, I have hope, but I ask you, what do you hope for? <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. Is your hope directed at temporal things that last for a little while and then vanish away, or is your hope in spiritual blessing and promises, thank you, Jesus, that culminate and heavenly glory and eternal life. An arrow needs energy. Without energy, an arrow would be a useless object. An archery, energy is transferred from the arm muscle into the bow and imparted to the arrow by the string. Only then is the arrow in use. Faith, hope, and love are not just passive things that work and work requires energy. Faith, hope, and love are not just nouns. They have verb forms. These are action words. We can say, I believe, I love, I hope. They are not merely things we have. They are things we do. As the Bible tells us, faith <coughs> or belief alone. A faith that does not work is a dead faith. 
James 2, verse 26. If God's arrows are faith help and love, we should observe a limited energy in them. First Thessalonians 1, 3, we find not only faith, hope, and love, but their energy as well. We constantly bear in mind your work of faith, labor of love, and perseverance of hope. First Thessalonians 1, 3. Paul speaks of your work of faith. There's the energy of the faith there. It's desire to do the work of obedience to God. Drawing back. Drawing back the bowstring without an arrow is useless work in the reverse place without work. And it's also useless, James 2 20. Like an arrow without a drawn bow. You say to me, Oh, I have faith. But I ask you, is your faith an energetic faith? Does your faith have an urge to obey Christ? Paul speaks of your labor of love. There's the energy of the love arrow. Labor. In the Greek, the idea is a toil and troubled labor. Just as we must have the obedience of faith. Romans 1, verse 5. So there must be the laborious struggle of love. The energy of love is, is commitment. The will to suffer in love. You say to me, oh, I have love. But I ask you, does your love toil? Does your love work on even through times of trouble? Paul speaks of your perseverance of hope. There's the energy of the hope arrow. Thank you, Jesus. Perseverance. Some translations say patience, but that is perhaps too passive. Yes, or a word. The idea is perseverance or stick to it. Stick to it. Imagine you have fallen over a cliff, but just save yourself from death to love. You managed as you fell to grasp for a root. Now you are holding on and yelling for all you are worth. <coughs> <coughs> oh my goodness. Uh, you hope to be saved and you give it everything you got. You say to me, oh, I have hope. But I ask you, is it a powerful holding on and preserving hope? An arrow needs penetration. Oh, I don't have to excuse me. I'm going to have to go. And I don't have nothing to play while I'm gone. But I've got to go to get me a cough drop. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Listen, thank you, Jesus. Come live on YouTube now, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, that's so good. You are so good. Thank you, Jesus. I will praise you, my good Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. I'm just checking things out. Tuesday, we have Ursa coming on. Oh, I guess it is. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise the Lord. It's all. It's showing everywhere. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So I guess it does show everywhere at one time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> thank you, Jesus. Okay. So I can go live on Facebook and YouTube. Sorry about that. At the same time. So this is how I want to do my. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now maybe I can get back to where I was reading. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. I had to put on something. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Okay. Without the ability to penetrate, without being sharp, an arrow would be Rather useless. To change an all deal, or you have probably pricked your finger with a pen on a needle, but that was easily removed. Have you ever had a fish hook lodged in your finger? That's quite a different matter. Yes. It penetrates and stays in. 
because it is barbed. If God's arrows are a place hoping us, we should find them barbed and penetrating both our hearts and the hearts of the people who know us. Where do you place hope and love get their sharpness from? What makes them penetrate the heart and stick? Well, in John, 1 John 4, verse 16, 17, we find not only place hope and love, but their penetration as well. We only, we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this love, it's perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. First John 4, 16-17. John says that we know and believe, yes, there's a, there's a penetration of the faith here. Yes, Lord. It becomes a knowledge. It's one thing to believe in something, and quite another thing to both know and believe it. Yes. Paul said, I know who I am, who, who I have believed, and am per persuaded, 2 Timothy 2, 1, verse 12. Yes. You say to me, Oh, I have faith. But I ask you, do you know Jesus? Is he your friend? John says that in us, love has been perfected. There's a penetration of the love arrow. It is perfected or full grown. He also used the words abides in connection with love. That's the same word. That's the same word. Paul used in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now, about his faith, hope, and love, these three. To abide means in dwell. Love must live in us, and we must live in love. Love is like the air we breathe. We must abide in it. And it must abide in us. If we were not in the air, or if the air were not in us, we would die. You say, you say to me, oh, I, I have love. But I ask you, is it perfected love? Is it an abiding love? John says that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. There's a penetration of the hope error of boldness or of confidence. You say to me, oh, I have hope. But I ask you, yes, or I ask you. Are you bold in that hope? Is it a full assurance and immovable confidence? There is no more important moment in all your existence now or in eternity than the moment you give account of yourself to God in judgment. Are you ready and confident in Christ for, us for that moment? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for listening. God bless y'all.